expecting me to show you all my favorite frappe mochaccino spots within a 10 kilometer radius of the nearest hot yoga studio, or if you're hoping that I'm going to reveal my top 5 favorite eyelash curlers, then by now I should probably tell you that this is not the channel for you. But I invite you to join us in this episode as we board a nauseating boat with the remnants of food poisoning in our bellies and check into a filth riddled hostel before discovering the island of our dreams. going to grab a scooter and a couple cigars so you might as well grab a snack and stick around because it's all coming up right now in a new fresh episode of Vaughn's World. Tepe Ferry in San Jorge and enjoyed a sunny breezy ride across the water. It took us about an hour from port to port. When we got near the island, one of the seamen jumped in the water holding the dock line and tied our gigantic ferry to another rope that floated just below the water surface. Diving into the water beside a ferry risking life and limb to tie a rope a hundred times a day is probably not the ideal career path for me, but to see someone else do it was truly impressive. in and all the chickens and various goods were driven off the deck. The seaman was laying on the sand for a well-deserved break and we headed straight to the rental place to pick up our donkey of a scooter. A quick drive got us to our first hostel where we spent the remainder of the afternoon patiently trying to sort out the myriad of problems the hostel confronted us with. Finally, we got our room keys with the understanding that we could only spend one night there, which ended up being a blessing. It was dark, we were hungry, so off we went to see what's what. had a lovely pizza at this place that had three conflicting zones of music. There was like Spanish music right beside us from a speaker, there was gospel music from the place next door, and then there was the Spice Girls from the table beside us. <laughs> but it was lovely. So anyway, that's the uh, end of this day basically. We're going to uh, go back to our hostel which is right there sleep and then check into a newer, better hostel if we can get there. Good morning. It's um, another beautiful day outside and today was supposed to be all about just exploring and driving around on a scooter with our hair whistling in the wind but because this hostel double booked us we're having to move hostel, which means we are kind of exploring on our scooters, but we're having to also take our backpacks with us, which kind of, which kind of sucks, because then if anything gets stolen, it's everything. 
And um, also it's just harder to scooter because I'm very tall and, about, <laughs> and the scooters are very small. But that's okay, those are minor gripes, you know, in the grand scheme of things. We're here, we're on an island, it's gonna be fun. Um, getting to the next place should be quite interesting. Apparently it's a dirt road that requires uh, trucks with high clearance. And we don't have one of those, we have a shitty little scooter with very low clearance. So, that'll be interesting. drove around the perimeter of the two volcanoes that make up the island. Aside from the food and culture, driving is a large part of the reason I enjoy traveling. I love towing the line between absorbing the scenery and losing myself to my thoughts while staying focused enough to keep Ollie and me safe. The tricky balance between handling the machinery and managing my excitement keeps me hungry for more. some insane views. I hope that the little action camera is picking them up because this is a, amongst the very top of the places in the world that I've driven a scooter for sure. Like that's, the, that's all you really need to accomplish if you come here is just drive a scooter around it and that's an event enough. You don't really have to do any of the touristy things. Like it's just so cool. You have to be careful though, there's a lot of speed bumps and potholes and loose gravel and they have these like interlocking bricks here that make up the road. So you do have to be wary of that, but it is just unbelievable. Like there's just a mountains everywhere. Eventually, we came to the ominous dirt road that all the hostel reviews warned us about. According to them, it was a thin and rugged 600 meter near vertical dirt road that headed straight up the volcano. But as usual, the reviews were overly inflated. We actually found the road to be a pleasant departure from the rumbling cobblestones. It was indeed a dirt road about 600 meters and it was at times quite steep, but hardly something that required a 4x4 off-road vehicle to navigate. This is a massive upgrade to the last place. I mean, check it out. We even have these gigantic, beautiful hardwood doors. There, hammock, table, and acres to explore. Lake, and you can't see it, mountain. I'll get you some footage later, but damn. All of this for pretty much the same price as the last place. It's just that to get here, you had to, well, you saw, it was quite a drive. It was well worth it. Comes with breakfast, so that's good. Which, which we haven't had yet. We still need to eat. So that's the first thing to sort out. And then the second thing is, is well, do we go anywhere or do we just chill out here? We went 
to explore the area and found a restaurant with hot sauce on the shelves and old Coke bottles filled with water in the ceiling to cleverly light up the interior. An assortment of furry friends joined us for lunch, looking to trade their cutest eyes for a taste of our meal. A meal, by the way, that was largely made from scratch. In the back of the restaurant, there were fresh noodles being stretched and hung, and fresh baked bread laying out to cool down. Feeling replenished, we went on a hunt to find some snacks and beer to bring back to the room. We stopped at the side of the road to look at things like fish and rabbits before heading back up the dirt hill to kick back and settle into our new digs. a spectacular day another one the weather is perfect which by the way I'll remind you that we scootered all day yesterday and there was not a single drop of rain so I don't know if my luck is turning around or what but uh, things are looking up anyway today we have to leave this beautiful place here and uh, jump on the scooter drive to the port get on the boat and then catch a shuttle back to Managua. So it's gonna be a long day of traveling. But not, a too strenu not too strenuous of one, which is fine. This place is perfect. This is Osa, by the way. Osa! Osa's an absolute sweetheart. Last night to get to dinner, it was pitch black and you have to walk down this crazy dirt road. And uh, she walked with us all the way to the main road and then went back, and she's just been hanging out with us the entire time we've been here. Yeah, she's a good girl. Very sweet dog. The trip back to the port was overall uneventful but beautiful no less. You can see the pride and ownership on everyone's house. It seems that no matter how much or how little money they might earn, almost every house was clean and well furnished. People dressed well, the landscaping and yard were mostly kept well and in order. In fact, it seems that money is almost irrelevant altogether. This is of course in stark contrast to North America, where some people are quite happy to have a collection of junk slowly decaying in their front yard while they wear a groove in the ground between the fridge and the couch with their prickly cankles sticking out of sleeveless moo-moos, only rising to action when the desire to look for love in any place that serves free pickled eggs and beer nuts arises. There's a merciful lack of escapism here. Not too many screens or TVs. The raging, desensitizing internet chatter is missing, quiet like when your furnace turns off for the first time in a while. There's almost no billboards or advertisements to speak of, no Ariana Grande or memes about Starbucks. You can see the hard lines on the faces of many locals. My guess is there's a lot of hard living happening here. But their laugh lines might tell a better story about what's really going on out here. I fell in love with Ometepe. I sincerely hope you never visit. Oh, also our scooter broke down and we had to stop to fix it. That was exciting. Well, we, rent, we returned the scooter and because we had to fix it, we missed the uh, ferry, but that's okay. Another one comes in a half hour. The real issue is that the ferry led us to a taxi that's waiting for us. So hopefully the taxi will still be there, but nothing we can do now for 30 minutes except maybe drink a beer. What a shame.
episode, we rent a car and go on a mission to find a little relaxation before the reality sets in that soon we'll have to fly back to Canada and move into a new apartment within the same week. But that's not for a while yet, so don't freak out and don't go anywhere. The adventure continues. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you in the next one.